Hey, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the 6-5 Podcast, Insider Edition, live from the road. Well, I'm live from the road with Mr. Patrick Moorhead. How's everybody doing out there? Pat, you are not here with me, but I'm at an event. I'm at an event. I traveled. I got on an airplane. And by the way, it was spectacular. Um, you know, just going into the, the main room, hearing that music, watching people filter in, it felt like thousands of people filtering in. We'll let our guests talk more about that. But I'm at NetSuite World, our uh, Sweet World here in Las Vegas, and you look like you're in your uh, living room. I know. Uh, Daniel, I'm supposed to be there sitting in another room next to you, uh, safely uh, distancing. And I have to tell you what, I watched the... I watched the keynote and also the run up to the keynote for Sweet World, and it looked like it was rocking on the floor. And you know, I know you're going to remind me of this later, but I actually missed going to events. So there, there we have it. It's on record. Well, it it's on video. It happens to all of us. I mean, you know, if we get back to traveling every week, we're going to be clamoring to be back at home. <laughs> but after a couple of years of being pent up, uh, I was looking for an airplane to take me anywhere. Uh, so. Exciting show today, Pat. We've got an insider edition from the road. At least I'm, like I said, from the road. Uh, and it's at Sweet World here. And we've got two extremely intelligent and fun guests. We've got Mr. Evan Goldberg and Mr. Jason Maynard joining us from the show. Uh, gentlemen, hello, I esteemed uh, friends with great hair. Appreciate you guys <laughs> joining us here on the Live Insider. Great to be here. Awesome to be here. Glad you made it. Yeah, there is yep. something about the uh, lack of hair and and beard. And up until, by the way, guys, up until last year, I was pretty much hairless. And I just decided, you know, it's time to do a comb over. So here we are. Let's talk uh, NetSuite Sweet World. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in here in a minute and give the gentleman a chance to introduce themselves. I do want to do a quick uh, little disclaimer for our show. Um, the 6.5 podcast, uh, big on analysis, uh, small on the news, and we love bringing guests and, and top leaders from some of the most prolific tech companies in the world. This show is for information and entertainment purposes only. And so while we will be talking about publicly traded companies uh, with publicly traded company executives, please do not take anything we say as investment advice. Uh, Mr. Evan Goldberg, uh, founder of NetSuite, executive vice president of Oracle, and Mr. Jason Maynard, Senior Vice President, Global Field Operations. Uh, love to get a quick intro from the both of you. Uh, Evan, I'm gonna let you go first. Okay, well, you know, you said it, that's, that's all I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, it's just a few letters. No, yeah, I founded NetSuite with Larry Ellison about 23 years ago. And, um, you know, we're 27,000 companies strong and just so excited to be talking to a bunch of those customers here, you know, for the first time in person in a long time. Excellent. Great to have you, Jason. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm Jason Maynard. Um, you know, I've been with uh, Oracle NetSuite now for six years. So it's been an exciting run. And, you know, the last few years, um, a lot of change, obviously, with everything that's gone on. But, uh, you know, it's so great to have um, a live, in person, human. <laughs> I, you know, I, I learned this word the other day IRL. I guess it means in real life. So I guess this is like an IRL thing. I had no idea what it was. I thought it was like some racing league or something. I was, I've been very confused for a long time. So I dig the IRL, like we're back with humans again. I, you know, I'm going to say I, I, you know, I may have given a couple hugs. So, you know, it's been a crazy event. It's been pretty crazy. Hey, as, long, as long as everybody's comfortable with that whole hugging thing. I mean, I walk up to everyone like handshake, hug, high five. What's the deal? Are we doing elbow bump still? Uh, you know, look, we've got about 15 minutes of your time. We know you're super busy. You've got a handful of questions. I want to start you off with a bit of a, of a of one that's just, I think, Pat, you and I both really wanted to hear the positioning and having the chance to have you both here. Um, you know, when, when Oracle talks about the, 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 the SaaS and the cloud suite, they often talk about Fusion and NetSuite together. So just as a quick uh, sort of trivia question for everybody out there in the crowd, I want to get, uh, you know, you guys to just say, when you, when you look at Fusion versus NetSuite, how do you guys break that down for people to give them a, a quick, simple response? Yeah, well, I mean... You know, we're quite sure that there's no single application that can work for every size business. And, um, you know, NetSuite is really laser focused on these fast growing, small and medium sized businesses that outgrow 
sort of their initial package software application. And Fusion is very focused on the extremely large organizations that are, you know, globally diverse. Um, we've really built something different. We realized when we came together as organizations, you know, NetSuite has built a single application. Everybody uses that one application of sort of one view, everything you need to grow your business all in one place. Fusion is a series of applications, uh, supply chain, financials, uh, customer, uh, uh, HR, that all, you know, really independently can work for an entire sort of, you know, large division of a multinational organization, but, you know, tie those things together. So, um, you know, there really isn't a ton of overlap. Co co companies really self-select into which one of them I I is appropriate. Now, that's great. I think that's a great place to start. And that's some uh, something uh, that people make uh, a lot of mistakes on when they're looking at uh, NetSuite. So I appreciate that. So, guys, I wanted to jump right into uh, a business update. And, you know, on the analyst call, uh, you shared some what I thought were some pretty impressive stats. And I was wondering if you can share them with the audience. Just, you know, I, I was really struck by the the number of tech IPOs, the the amount of uh, customers that went uh, uh, public in in twenty twenty one, things like that. Yeah, we um, you know we we've been really fortunate the last few years to have some great growth in the business. Um, on the last earnings call, we talked about twenty eight percent year over year growth. Um, we were acquired roughly five years ago. It's coming up, I think, the anniversary here uh, when the transaction closed, and, and so we like to look at the metric. Um, of when we were acquired, we had roughly 11,000 customers, and now we're over 27,000 customers. Yeah, um, yeah. So we've seen huge growth in our customer base, which we're obviously very proud about, and we love love seeing all of them. And um, you know, there's been a lot of growth as well within the customer's own business, and, and some of the stats we've shared is you know, two thirds of the IPOs in the last year um, were on NetSuite. We've seen hundreds of companies go public on the platform, so it's it's kind of cool to see them become you know fast growing now publicly traded firms on their own, and so we're we're humbled to be part of their growth. And you know, I think it's it's uh, kind of a testament. We focus a lot on, like I've said, those fast growing small medium sized companies, and it's super great to see them then graduate and go to the public markets. Yeah, I just can't believe it. I mean, how many? I mean, you must. You guys must be doing something right uh, there to have uh, have that Im impressive uh, uh, view. Yeah, Pat. Well, they're I, I doing something. All... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Jason. I was actually going to say I, I want to ask Jason because you know he's got the Wall Street background. I wanted to ask, okay, like, hey, how much did this the the crazy SPAC uh, year add to the number of public companies? I I, I want to ask. Maybe we'll talk offline about that. Just curious how many of them may have been <laughs> may have been uh, SPACs, Jason. Um, there were a handful of SPACs. There were a few. That, they, they, they were, the SPAC mania over the summer definitely created some, some funny meetings where you'd meet with somebody and they'd be like, okay, we need to, we need to get our financials implemented in 62 days because that's when we're going out. And so, you know, that's calmed down a little bit. So it's, it's not as crazy as it was maybe, maybe five, six months ago. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I was listening to Evan, a great, great uh, keynote today. Really enjoyed it. You made me laugh a couple of times. Um, you know, I was like, "There's a he's got a nice kind of mix of wit and humor, a little charm, some products and technology, putting it all together." I guess it's like a pro. You've probably done this before. Um, I, first time. Tenth. Uh, the tenth Super Bowl. Yeah, no, I could tell. I could tell you're very comfortable, and this audience is is super engaged and connected with you guys. A lot of loyalty. These these mid sized companies, and of course, you have up and down from there. But uh, you can definitely tell they're building on NetSuite. And part of building on NetSuite, by the way, I really took away was, you know, just extensibility. You know, obviously, you, you went from NetLedger in the earliest days to NetSuite. Um, and you really, you talked a lot about platform today, you know, which really is all about giving these customers more of what they need as they extend, whether that's, you know, the analytics side, whether that's, you know, the AI and ML technologies that you're building out and other things. You know, I'm kind of curious what's driving your decision making you know in terms of how you're deciding to build grow pick the areas to go and you can't address everything at one time so what's driving you what's your guiding light yeah and i mean the first thing is just going out to customers and asking them you know what's on their mind what's uh you know taking up their time that they'd rather be doing something else that really was the genesis of, of sweet banking is that you know we heard from our customers i'm spending a lot of time on these manual uh, you know, banking tasks. And then 
really, you know, if we can get them spend less time on that and focus on sort of what's strategic for their company, that's where some of these more advanced products like the NetSuite Analytics Warehouse can come in, where you can now start thinking about how can I use all this data I have in my business sort of more strategically to help me make decisions and grow. So, you know, again, it's just talking to the customers, hearing um, what they think will help them, and, and then trying to sort of operationalize it across, you know, really a, a bunch of different industries. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're announcing applies from everything from retail, manufacturing, wholesale distribution, all the way to, you know, not for profits. Yeah, maybe we can uh, do the double click on the uh, on the analytics warehouse uh, while we're here. Um, you know, you extended NetSuite Analytics, uh, and is this uh, another example of of how you're working closely with Oracle? And 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 listen, I've I you and I had chatted uh, previously and, and got the rundown, but just curious, what problem does it is it solving for customers? Well, just the explosion of data, including in their business. Um, so, you know, so many companies now, you know, are running big parts of their business on the internet, online, and they're, they're getting just this massive data coming in. Um, being able to sort of correlate across your different domains of data, that's what it's all about. So if you have an internal system that tracks how people are using your technology, and then you can correlate that to how much they're paying you, that, that could definitely help. No, I appreciate that, and also I, I think showed, uh, you know, incremental value of of what Oracle does uh, on on top of that. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we we are being really methodical about extending the NetSuite platform with other Oracle technology. It started with our planning and budgeting capabilities that came from Oracle's planning and budgeting cloud service, and this is sort of the next one. And we're, you know being really intentional about you know making sure we have everything in place um and jason can can wax eloquent about this i know uh so that they're successful with all this different technology i mean we don't want them to just have you know just this uh this hurricane of new technology that they that they have to figure out um how it works with netsuite yeah i i i actually want to wax poetic on something else though and and, and i'll take either of you but you know, as I was listening and you kind of started alluding to Evan, uh, the sweet banking announcement, and that one was one that really caught me. You know, the first thing I said to myself is, look, you know, you just see the rise of the squares, the, you know, uh, PayPal, of course, have, have had a ton of growth, but you also see like the SoFi's and the Robin Hoods and, you, you know, just the, the fintech phenomena that's going on right now. And I have to imagine lots of businesses are starting to think about this. Are we running business differently? I mean, on the most extraordinary side, it's like, are we taking Bitcoin for Tesla, right? I mean, but we're starting to hear about these kinds of things where companies are rethinking the whole platform, how they bank, the integration of real fintech and, and modernization. And, you know, sweet banking, to me, the automation of sweet banking, I mean, some of it's traditional. Some of it's just handling and automating everyday tasks. But it seems to me that you guys are kind of starting to think about, you know, at some point in the future, the way companies are going to integrate and operate and function with banks is going to be fundamentally different. Yeah, I think you you kind of bring up a, 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 I think a very interesting point, which is when we when we looked at sweet banking, um, we we took the power of the sweet idea and said, how do we apply it to this area of fintech to bring it into ERP? So we didn't try and just bring one point product to market for say AP automation or AR, AR automation really had a platform unified suite approach. And so, yeah, we're doing the, the, you know, what you call sort of the blocking and tackling APAR processes, improve transaction reconciliation, you know, hopefully save time and money for our CFO friends, make it easy for them to do that. But at the same time, we envision that we're going to be able to plug in a wide range of interesting products. And so, you know, we, we obviously are working with HSBC from a financial services standpoint. There'll be other banks that can plug in. But, you know, down the road, there can be a lot more interesting, you know, decentralized finance type of approach, you know, crypto, a lot of different things that we could do in terms of having a platform that other innovative services can really access. And I think the customers want to see that. They may not be ready for, you know, a full laser eyed you know, approach today, but they're going to get there soon enough. And so hopefully we've got something that works, solves some pain today, but it really opens up potential for tomorrow. 
So, so real quickly, just to kind of, you know, ask you to, to build on that just a little bit. I imagine you're not the only company that's building a, you know, an ERP or an enterprise software suite that's kind of thinking about this. Do you think like, and, and, and Evan, I know you, you were big on automation, you're big on insights, you're big on agility. Like, how is the suite banking? Is, is there a couple things about it that you would say really differentiate that you guys are really feel like you've, you've stepped out ahead of uh, the competition, which, you know, as we've discussed, in the markets you serve, you know, it's, it's a small number, but there are some really good competitors. Well, I, I, I Jason might have uh, a, a, a couple points to emphasize. I, you know, I think that one of the things we're most excited about is the connection to your customers that you can have, you know, starting with that pay link. But the next thing is they can sign up for uh, customer portals called Sweet Commerce My Account and really broaden that sort of online connection to your customers so that they can see their orders, see, you know, trouble tickets. They could see, you know, so kind of 24 seven, they can reorder. And that's what customers are asking for. They're asking uh, for you to meet them anytime, anywhere. And uh, so, so that, you know, I think that kind of the broad footprint that we have as a suite, we can deliver that customer experience. It starts with that sort of banking AR connection, but then broadens into a much deeper online connection with your customers. No, that's good. Um, and, and I have to tell you, as a, as a small business person, anything you can do to enhance uh, even, you know, getting, getting paid quicker uh, is, is an incredible thing. And, and particularly when you're uh, a startup and, and some of the, the IPO customers, I mean, having cash, having cash flow is, is vital. So uh, guys, I wanted to, uh, uh, last topic here are customers. And one thing I was struck uh, in the keynote were your customers seem pretty energized and and excited uh, to be there. You know, I, I watch a lot of events and sometimes, it's, you know, it's like watching a wooden Indian, but, um, you know, the customers really seemed excited uh, to, to give their, their stories. And that's sometimes hard to pull out uh, from them. You know, we saw Click Stop, uh, you know, talk about Make-A-Wish, Love Pop, Modsy. And I know you love all of your customers uh, the same, uh, but I'm curious, um, you know, any big stories that, that were super, super exciting that, uh, that, that come top of mind? Jason, you got one. I, you know, I'm I'm biased. I love the I love the love sack guys, and and I've had a love sack in my office for five years. Uh, I got a couple on order coming into the house, and uh, I think they make it in stereo. Yeah, and and I I already hit them up to see if I can get make sure I can get uh, I can claim my inventory to get one of the ones with the built in stereo. But but what I what I love about their story is. You know, they've been with us for a while, but they've also had to change their business. Um, they grew dramatically. They actually re-implemented at one point. And, you know, they, they have been a great poster child for a company that has had a lot of change, evolved their business model, and really kind of taken advantage of the capabilities of the suite. So I always think that one's kind of cool. Um, Evan, I don't know if you had, you, you had to interview them all. So what, yeah, if no, you have to pick I, no, I would just throw a shout out for Modsy because, um, you know, we've been talking for years at Sweet World about product companies becoming service companies and service companies become a product companies and they do it all. I mean, they're a, an app, you know, a product, this super cool technology that does, you know, allows you to do basically scan your room and pick a style and then they do interior design for you, you know, delivered by humans. So they're a services company and then you pick out the things that you like and you buy them from them. So they're a product company. So, um, you know, I talked to Shauna about, um, you know, being able to walk and chew gum and juggle at the same time. And that's, you know, that's what we're seeing in these sort of hybrid companies. So I think that was, a, you know, that was a really cool uh, story there and how NetSuite has helped them in the pandemic with the supply chain that, you know, this, they just have so much to do. That, you know, the more they can, you know, have their supply chain be automated and, and have orders, you know, go to the right place at the right time, um, the easier it is for them to, to grow. And speaking of supply chain, that would be a, a topic that we could spend another 45 minutes on. But um, <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, you know, we, we are going to let you get on because uh, Evan and Jason, I am certain that both of you probably had a commitment of about three minutes ago at the top of, at the bottom of the hour. Because if, I, if your schedule is anything like mine at these events, 
Uh, you've got a meeting accounted for pretty much every minute till you go to bed. But I just want to say, Jason, Evan, thank you so much for, you know, spending some time with us. Uh, it's great to get you in front of our audience. And, and I expect we're going to be talking a lot more in the coming month. Fantastic. It was great talking with you guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks again. Yeah, that's a great wow. conversation, man. I, I, I am really fascinated. Like I said, I've been following the growth, Oracle's cloud business. We've talked a lot about it. That's a big piece of that growth. And yeah. we look at that, those, those mid double digit growth rates. I've said it, I've said it in some of my pieces that I've written on market watch and other places, you know, you're talking about twenties and 30% growth in, in enterprise yeah. software. And that suite's really been fundamental. And you're also talking about serving that small and mid sized and growing enterprise, these startups, these IPOs. I mean, Pat, it's just in the right space. It's doing the right things and it's competing at the right, at the right altitude. So really impressive. And, and the guys you, everybody just met out there. Those are the guys, those are the guys, uh, you know, among them and a large team that they work with that are, that are leading the charge. Yeah. I, th I think it's just so much fun. You know, it's, you always wonder, Hey, how, how, how do this, how do these up and coming smaller companies, uh, how do they run their business and what tools do they use? And I think we just found, uh, our answer and I'm a little embarrassed uh, that it took me this long to to uh, figure this out but no it, really cool stuff that's going on and I think it's uh, really important uh, for people to understand too NetSuite doesn't exist to be be a feeder uh, to fusion that's a that's something that people get wrong uh, all the time that I think I'm gonna have to uh, uh, correct uh, uh, all the time well, as analysts, uh, that's our job. We talk to the market, we set them straight. But uh, Pat, exactly. you know, at, at this point, we've got to we got to close close down the show. So thanks again to Evan, Jason, the whole team at NetSuite and Sweet World for hosting us, allowing us to do this show. Thanks for getting us back live and in person. Can't yes. wait to go to Las Vegas Airport and fly home. That's like the only part I'm really <laughs> dreading. But but I I, I want to say thanks to our audience. Thanks to everybody out there. Hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends. We've got lots of great insider additions here on the pod. Uh, and, and of course, on the video, join us on YouTube. As always, I'll suggest send that negative feedback. If you have any to Pat and all the good <laughs> stuff, send my way. But for this episode of the 6-5 for insiders, Pat, we got to say goodbye. So why don't you say goodbye? Take care. Take care, everybody. Love you guys. We'll